What is up guys? This is QRim from the Trinity of Lyft and today I'm bringing all of you guys a pretty fun deck profile in my Pudding Sis Modultry deck. So, I did attend this cross soul sneak peek this past weekend and because there was Modultry support in the set, I just had to get it as soon as I possibly could. So I did get the new support which is that Modultry Pudding Sis Chocola a la mode that you guys see right there on the extra deck. And I decided to try and make a build of Modultry that really could utilize her to the best of her ability. So. Let's get right into this deck profile of this new variant. Alrighty, so starting us off, we have the one Madochi Pudding Cess. Now, we have to run one Pudding Cess in order to use this brand new card to the fullest. And really, it's kind of a big drawback for this deck because Pudding Cess is just, it's seriously such a bad card. First of all, it's a level 5, which is really, really awkward in this deck because you have to tribute summon it to, get, to at least get it on board. Or, of course, have a Mufo with it, but it's still really awkward to summon. On top of that, it doesn't synergize well with any of your standard combo plays within this deck, because it is that level 5 monster. On top of that, it has a really lackluster effect. Basically, the only benefit for having this card in the deck is that it looks really cute, which is... It's really, it's just all it is is aesthetics, really. But again, we have to run one just because we cannot get our pudding cess, our, our big pudding cess effect without having the little pudding cess underneath it. So we do have to run one of it, sadly. But it really, there's ways to work around it. Like I, like I said, there is Mew way to summon it from your hand if you do end up drawing it. But again, it's just a really bad card, and we really don't want to see it ever unless we are going into our pudding cess combo. So we do have the one pudding cess. Next up, we have the three Modochi Angeli because she is the best combo card in this deck. She is a single card plus two, and she is a lone fire blossom. So, I mean, we gotta run it at three, really. Next up, we have our Stratos of the deck, which is the Triple Magiline. Of course, she searches out anything that we need, or any Modochi, whenever we normal summon her to the field. So, of course, she is the one that we will be using to search out our Angelis or our Mufes, or whatever combo card that we might need at any given time. Then, moving on, we have the triple hoot cakes because hoot cakes is usually going to be the thing that we're going to be summoning off of Angeli. As hoot cakes is the guy that can get us our free pluses because he can summon Messenger Lotto, and subsequently, Messenger Lotto can get us a search also. So, we have the three hoot cakes. Next up, we have the double Messenger Lotto. Speaking of which, we only have two because three will definitely clog, and he really doesn't do much in your hand. So we really don't want to draw him as we'll be usually, again, special summoning him from our deck with either Angeli or Hoot Cakes. So we have the nice medium of two. Finally, for the last couple of Modochis, we have the double Modochi Mufue. Again, because we don't need three, really, because we have other combo cards to, um, to pair alongside our Angeli. So that we're not as heavily reliant on Mufue. As well as there are times when you can um, mismatch Mufue with something like a Hand Trap or maybe no Modolchis. Or maybe Mufue and a, a Magiline, which is also fairly awkward. So we wanted to cut those dead draws down as much as we can. So again, like Messenger Auto, we did go into um, only two Mufue just to have that happy medium. Next, we go into our Hand Trap, starting off with Double Trigodia because... We have Tragodia in here to act as a play elongator and to just keep us going through our plays as Tragodia has the effect to, of course, manipulate its level. So usually to go into our combos, we usually will need to have at least one level 3 on board alongside our Angeli to do any sort of combo. So we do have Tragodia because we can possibly manipulate him to a level 3, again, to act as another combo card alongside our Angeli. So we do have the two Tragodia. Then finally, for the last few monsters, we do have Double Veiler because we do not want our Necros of Trishulas and our Manju Sendrus and all that kind of bad stuff to ever go off. So we have the Effect Veilers for that standard effect negation. So that is it for the monster lineup. Moving on to the spells. We go into the Double Madochi Chateau and the One Madochi Ticket. Again, this is pretty darn standard, really. It's the lineup that I've been using in this deck for as long as I can remember. And I've really not wanted to ever change this number because it's just it really is the perfect number. Really, if you ever find yourself in a situation where they do get destroyed, you can always recycle them back with TR Misu, which is another benefit of this deck. As it's really hard for you to run out of resources with the amount of recyclability that, that you have. So we have this number of 2 and 1. Next up, following those cards, we have two Instant Fusion. Now, this is another combo card that we can combo alongside our Angeli, but Instant Fusion adds another dynamic to this deck now, as it can help us go into our Pudding Cess. So, 
with that, Instant Field Green becomes even more essential within this deck to help us combo off of, um, into our Pudding Chess play. And because of that, we do still need to run these Instant Fusions at 2. In my opinion, 3 is a little bit too much. As, sure, it helps you, it helps you see it earlier. But really, again, it's not your win condition, I guess you could say, to go into your Pudding Cis combo. It's just another option to have. So we do have the Instant Fusions. I just felt like I wanted to just mention um, that it, got, it has added utility within this variant of Madolchi. Next up, we do have the Triple MST, which is something I actually haven't run in this deck for quite a bit because the meta is, well, we know what the meta is right now, and MST is a fairly bad card. However, the reason why I decided to put MST back into this deck is because lose a turn is going to be a thing soon, and that card is pretty bad. So I did throw the three MSTs in here just for lose a turn, and as well as any other just generic floodgates or standard back row that our opponent might be trying to hide behind. So of course we have the MST for just general back row removal. Next up, we have the four Jin outs in this, or not, excuse me, not the only four, but the four spell based Jin outs. We have the one Raigeki, one Book, and Double Dark Hole. Of course, we do not want to get Jin Locked ever because Jin Lock is horrid against this deck, as all they have to do is basically summon it. And unless you have an out, you are pretty screwed for a while. So we do have these four cards as our standard Jin outs that we'll hopefully try and see as early as we can. So we have these cards. And then finally, for the last three spells, we have the Triple Off Start, because 37 card consistency. This is a combo-based deck, and pretty much my mentality in almost all combo-based decks that I run is that I should run Triple Off Start because it just helps us dig for our combo pieces just that much quicker. Now then, that is it for these spells. Going into the traps, we go into Double Breakthrough Skill, because we still don't want effects. We still don't like Necros of Trishula. We don't like Lavavo Chain. We don't like Manju. We don't like Cleaford Disc. We don't like... I don't know, like a ton of other things. We, all, we don't like all of their effects, so we have to have just more effect negation. Then following that, we have five One of Traps, and they're all pretty darn good. So we have the one Vanities, the one Compulse, the one Solemn, the one Ring, and then finally the one Bottomless. All fairly standard One of Traps. They're all really, really strong. And also Compulse and Ring are just extra gin out just so we can see a, a gin out as early as we can. So we have these five traps to round off our main deck. Moving on to the extra deck, we go into our Modolchi Pudding Sis Chocola a la mode. This is the brand new card from Cross Souls and to those of you guys who don't know what she does, I'll actually read her off to you guys. So first of all, she takes two level five Earth Monsters and then you can also XYZ summon uh, Modolchi Pudding Sis Chocola a la mode over any Madochi XYZ monster that you control that is a lower rank, or, or rank 4 and lower, excuse me. Now then, once per turn, you can target one Madochi card in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. While this card has a Madochi Pudding Cess as an XYZ material, when a Madochi card, when a, when a Madochi card or cards in your graveyard is shuffled for, into your main deck, except during the damage step, you can detach one XYZ material from this card, special summon a Madochi from your deck in attack position or face down defense position. So. Obviously, you guys can see that this is why we run Pudding Sis. We have to have a Pudding Sis underneath her in order to use her to any sort of degree. So, we have the Pudding Sis in here to act as a sort of alternative combo. As we really won't be going into Madochi Pudding Sis Chocolate a la mode all that much. Because, honestly, the only other way outside of going into her very specific play is to overlay her over a TR Misu. And although, yeah, she is fairly big, as she will get to 3,000 attack underneath Chateau, I'd honestly rather have TR Misu because we, all, we obviously all know that TR Misu just has an, a ridiculous effect. And even if we do overlay this Pudding Cess over TR Misu, we really can't even use her to her fullest ability because there is no Pudding Cess underneath her. So that is why we only do run one. And again, she's just here just to have that option for whenever we do want to combo into her. So we do have the one Chocolate Pudding Cess. Moving on, we have the double TR Misu because, well, TR Misu, that's, this is the standard boss monster of Madolchis, and she is the best, obviously, because she just has probably the best form of removal in the game as it is non-targeting bouncing removal, which is just absolutely nuts. So we do have the two TR Misu here to act as our boss monster. Following that, we have the double Levier because Levier is a combo XYZ that we should really run just to help us get into our combos. Much in in light of Levier, we have the one MX Saber Invoker because, again, like Levier, it's another combo card. And whenever there are times that we cannot go and combo into our Leviers properly, like if we do not successfully resolve a Hoot Cakes or whatever, we do have Invoker to act as another option. 
Next up, we have the one downer magician because we can overlay this over our leviers and our invokers whenever we do some of them into our combo. And it just helps us not have any little monsters on board so that our opponent cannot get free damage over us. Moving on, we just have um, staple rank force for the rest of the extra deck, or rest of majority of the extra deck. We have the one Dweller, the one Heartland Draco, the one Castell, and the one E Knight to round off our rank 4 lineup. Of course, these are all pretty self explanatory. Abyss Dweller is especi um, especially potent because Burning Abyss and Shadol gives, you, gives your deck a fairly hard matchup. So we do have the Dweller here just to help us in those matchups. We have Heartland Draco obviously to help us poke for game and steal them whenever we can. We and then we have Castell and Exiton obviously because they're just really, really good. So we have these rank 4s. Then we have one singular rank 3 in the form of Ghost Trick Alucard. We have Alucard just to help us get rid of back row because we really do not want to get stopped midway by things like an alpha or something like that. So it's easier to get it out of the way with Alucard just so we can help ourselves ensure that our place can go off. So we do have the one Alucard as our single rank 3 or our single rank, our single rank 3 that isn't combo base related. And then finally, for the last three cards in our extra deck, we have our three instant fusion targets, which are our Cybersaurus, our Carbonola Warrior, and our Fusionist. Alright guys, so that is it for my Pudding Says Modolchi deck. I hope you all did enjoy. And again, please let me know what you guys think of this, li um, this list down in the comment section below. And as always, this is QRim from the Trinity of Lyft, and I'll see all of you guys later. Peace.